Not long after World War II, famous car makes were founded. Although in 1929 the Scuderia Ferrari was founded, the car make Ferrari was founded in 1947. And although Porsche was founded in 1931, they produced their first car in 1948. But there were car makes with a way longer history, which were already famous by that time when Ferrari and Porsche were still wearing diapers. And this episode from Driving with Gloves is about the most luxurious British car make of that time. And even more than 70 years later, it still is. Hi, my name is Cor, and welcome to my channel, Driving with Gloves. I always drive with car gloves. Your question might be, why do I drive with gloves? And my answer is, why not? World War II was a dark and evil period, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And Rolls Royce said, let there be light, and there was dawn, and the rich people saw the Rolls Royce Silver Dawn which turned darkness into light. Didn't that sound like the third verse of the Holy Book of Genesis? Although Rolls-Royce was founded in Manchester and stands for the most luxurious British car brand, they even produced cars in Springfield in Massachusetts in the United States. In 1946, however, the Rolls-Royce production was transferred from Derby to Crewe in England. Until 1949, Rolls-Royce only built rolling chassis. The coaches were built by coach builders. The last Rolls-Royce of this kind was built from 1947, the Rolls-Royce Silver Wraith, but in 1949, Rolls-Royce started to build a car with a factory-built coach, the Rolls-Royce Silver Dawn. And it is a Rolls-Royce Silver Dawn from 1950 that I'm driving today. Thanks to Autofogel in Switzerland, I have the opportunity to drive this 70 years old roller today. It had only three owners from new. It has less than 120,000 kilometers, which is around 75,000 miles on the clock. The Silver Dawn was the car which saved Rolls-Royce after World War II. In total, 760 were produced. So I'm a lug again, because I have the opportunity to drive this very rare and very special car. They started production in 1948, but the cars were delivered from 1949. This one was delivered to a customer in Zurich, in Switzerland, on the 1st of February 1950. As I already said, 760 were produced, and most of them were left-hand drive. But strangely, although delivered to Switzerland, this is a right-hand drive version. 700 were so-called standard steel four-door sedans, but coach builders such as Park Ward, James Young, H.J. Mulliner, Freestone and Webb, and even Graber, Pininfarina, and Sauerchik built about 60 custom bodies such as drophead coupés, limousines, sedan cars, and other exotic interpretations. You might be wondering why I do drive this car myself and why I do not use a chauffeur. Because this car was intended to be a driver's car and not to be a chauffeur's car. The car came on the market initially with a four-speed manual gearbox, but from 1952 there was an automatic transmission available. Both manual and automatic transmission were available until the end of production in 1955. 
since this car is from 1950, it's obvious that it has a four-speed manual gearbox, but it has some kind of a cruise control. Okay, it's not an ETC cruise control, because that was introduced 38 years later, in 1988, in the 7-series of BMW. Normally, I do not go into details about the interior of a car, but this time I will. But first, let me show you this little key. That is not the key from my letterbox, but it is the key from this noble car. So, can we say that size doesn't matter? Well, if you look at the wheelbase, the Silver Dawn is based on a shortened wheelbase of the Silver Wraith and it has now a wheelbase of only 120 inch, which is 305 centimeters. But it is still extremely smooth to drive. But let's go back to the interior. Look at this gorgeous interior with wood and leather everywhere. On the passenger side you even have a drawer with tools. But be honest, would you repair this car yourself with these tools? And in the back you have some nice picnic tables. Of course, in fine burr walnut. There is a very special mechanism to open the window on the driver's side. You only have to pull or push the handle. And this car is from a time that smoking was still very fashionable. So take a look at these ashtrays. In the rear you have doors which open in a normal manner. But in the front you have so-called suicide doors. Yes, it has a cozy interior and you can even open the roof. Yes, it is a luxurious driver's car which is still a joy to drive, even after 70 years. But I tell you now, what makes this car go forward? Although it is a very smooth ride, it is not equipped by the famous 6 3 quarters L-series V8 engine, because that was introduced later in 1959, but by an inline six-cylinder engine, which I will show you immediately. By the procedure to open the bonnet, you certainly see that this car is from another era. There is even something written on the hood. The inline six-cylinder engine has an overhead inlet and side exhaust valves and has a capacity of 4,257 cc. In 1951 it was enlarged to 4,566 cc. That this car is from another era you see by this fantastic indicator. I do not know if you might have noticed it, but I am wearing the wrong belt, because this is a Bentley belt. Or is it the B from Boersma, my last name? Because I even wear a handkerchief with C on it. So C, B, Gora Boersma, in case when I forget my name. But perhaps my Bentley belt wasn't so wrong after all. In 1931, Bentley was bought by Rolls Royce. Bentley was until then famous for building exclusive sports cars, so in other words, driver's cars. Rolls-Royce built mostly chauffeur's cars, so there was also a Bentley sister model from the Silver Dawn. It was called Bentley Mark VI. But strangely, also the Silver Dawn was a driver's car, because both cars were based on the shortened chassis of the Rolls-Royce Silver Wraith. The Rolls-Royce Silver Dawn was introduced in rough times just after World War II. So Rolls-Royce wanted to offer their clients a more accessible car. A car which was a driver's car and not as the other Rolls-Royces, a chauffeur's car. But as a driver's car, you certainly want to have some performance. But please remember that this car is already 70 years old. So 0-100 km an hour 
16.2 seconds and a top speed of around 140 km an hour. So more or less the same performance levels as the smart car I drove in my last review. But this Rolls Royce is way smoother to drive. And for a Rolls Royce it isn't even a heavy car. Only 1842 kilograms. And the coolest thing is, when driving it and looking over the bonnet, you just see the spirit of ecstasy showing you the way. What shall I say? No navigation system needed. Just follow the lady. Thank you very much for watching this episode from Driving with Gloves with this glorious Rolls Royce Silverdorn from 1950. Special thanks goes to Auto Vogel in Switzerland for lending me this fantastic car. By the way, this car is for sale and the gloves are included. So I hope that you like this episode from Driving with Gloves, so please thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel Driving with Gloves. See you soon in a new episode from Driving with Gloves.